Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. I did today a light brown smoky eye because I wanted to be fast and um, yeah, it should have been easy, but um, it turned out to be not so fast. So the problem is I'm meeting with my grandma and she's waiting for me and she's going to keep waiting until I'm ready here. Um, yeah, the palette I've used for this look is the Urban Decay Naked Petite Heat palette and it's looking amazing in the pan but the quality of it is just a small disaster a petite disaster so i'm going to show you now how i did the look how i struggled with the eyeshadows um, i also used some new other products and you're also going to see how they performed if you stay tuned <laughs> So what I'm doing first always is priming my eyelids. This is very important because it's going to make sure that your makeup, eye makeup is going to stay put, it's not going to crease on you, anything like that. Then I'm always setting that just to make sure you know that it is set in stone and I'm using here the RCMA um, loose powder and the brush is from NYX. So let's see about the palette. I'm using the Naked Petite Heat from Urban Decay and I'm taking first Vibrate which is a warm peach with a matte finish and this is permanent in the palette. So I'm applying this on the outer corners and into the crease area and I'm using here a 227 from Zoeva but let's get you know into some details. So with this eyeshadow I have no problem. I have um, absolutely no issues. Um, it's a light eyeshadow you cannot really see lots of fallout because of it some but really not exaggerated and it also blends okay this one i have to say though that also this one has a very dry feeling to it right from the beginning i've noticed this with all the shadows from the palette so now i'm taking hot spell which is a light medium brown with warm orange undertones and also a matte finish and as soon as i've dipped the brush into the pen i've noticed how powdery this is it has lots of fallout um which is not really a problem because with matte eyeshadows and very pigmented ones it's um okay to happen but it just gave me that feeling that it's not going to work well this palette did you ever use an eyeshadow that you put it on you start lightly blending the edges and kind of disappears it kind of leaves some bare spaces this gave me that feeling but i hoped that you know it's just with this eyeshadow and the darker ones are going to be okay but yeah it wasn't if i were to judge the palette after i've used those two eyeshadows i'd say yeah it's like a medium quality i mean they have fallout you can of course see from what i'm doing and uh, you have to work a bit carefully when you're blending them because they tend to disappear but i wouldn't say this is you know a fail now I'm using Heast, which is a medium dark brown with warm orange undertones and a matte finish as well. And it really started to annoy me because it has a sandy consistency. It's like sand. You put it on the lid and as soon as you start blending it out, you lose it. It just disappears on you i worked very carefully i did like tapping motions i didn't rub it you know like crazy or something and you can already see how streaky this is it left like you know bare spaces and other ones are just too much pigmentation it's just something strange with this one and very very sandy honest to god they should have called it orange sand because it's exactly that so let me tell you after i've filmed this video the intro the outro the whole look i've searched a bit the internet because i wanted to see what people were saying about the product what the reviews were and i was so shocked that you know in general everyone had a well has a good impression about it which leads me to think that maybe i'm the one that has you know too high expectations from a brand or others just have too low expectations i i don't know you tell me what do you see on the other hand i'm thinking for 24 euros here in germany for six eyeshadows i should have those expectations 
Do you know why I'm really pissed? I'm gonna tell you right now because I was in Sephora and I grabbed this palette and I, you know, I didn't even think it's not good. I didn't even swatch it. I just grabbed it because of the coloring. I mean, this is Urban Decay. What can it be then? Fantastic. So yeah, I could have bought anything else instead, like a Natasha Denona palette, like a VZR palette, which I'm so uh, that I didn't buy it instead. But it's time I know better. Lesson learned, isn't it? The deep plummy brown with warm undertones and a matte finish as well is called Strike, which um, is a bit confusing because Urban Decay has another eyeshadow, which is a shimmery old gold one kind of, um, and it's called also Strike. But this is from this palette, and when you see it in the pan, it's to die for, but it just doesn't work. It's the worst from the palette. When I thought it cannot get worse, it just did. This eyeshadow proved me wrong. Just look at this. This. look how it looks how it applies to my eyelid it's so grainy so sandy so dusty so dry I don't like it I have never in my entire life worked so much on a smoky eye now granted a smoky eye where you apply layer by layer eyeshadow on top of eyeshadow is the real test for an eyeshadow palette an everyday look is a different story because you use actually lighter eyeshadows just a wash of them and you don't really see the fallout you can't really see exactly how it performs how it layers on top of other eyeshadows and um, that's just different but when it has to perform, when it has to give the best it can, that's when you see exactly what it can and what it cannot in this case. Oh well, just a big disappointment. It's not the first one, it's not going to be the last one. So let's move on. Let's move on to the mascara, which is from Maybelline. I like this one, which is called Angel Push Up Mascara in Black. And I'm using it mostly when I'm wearing false lashes on top because um, when I want, you know, my natural lashes to look full and voluminous and long, I would wear another mascara. But I mostly like this one because I can do the tight lining thing without an eyeliner. You're going to see that in a bit, but first I need to put on my false lashes. They are from Arison Lashes. I love them. I love them very much. This is a fiver pack and it's human hair. I've curled them before applying them, as is my custom. And um, I'm going to put now my whole base and then move on to the eyes one more time. So I'm using first a moisturizer from La roche Posay. Of course, it's the um, Hydra Face Intense Cream, which I love so much. I've talked about it. I've talked about their products in general a lot. And then I'm applying a face primer, which is that gal from Benefit. This one, the pink one. And after swiping it directly onto my skin, I'm working it into my skin with a Real Techniques brush, which is the Expert Face Brush. For foundation, I chose a full coverage one, the long lasting foundation from Art Deco. It's oil free, it has an SPF of 20 and the shade I'm using is 30. I am using the same brush from Real Techniques just because I wanted to see how it applies. But to be honest, I think with a dampened sponge would be a better idea. It just looks more natural because you can blend it into the skin better than you can with a brush. Oh, and now I'm getting excited because I'm using the new L'Oreal concealer. It's called the Infallible More Than Concealer. And it's looking like this. The shade I'm using here is vanilla, which is a bit light for me. I'll have to buy the next dark one um, just to see if that matches better my skin tone but they claim this to be 24 hour long wearing foundation and it has a matte finish that's what they say and I agree I mean I don't know about the 24 hours because um, I sleep at night and longer than 12 hours I don't need to wear a concealer but I'm more than happy if it stays put as I want it for 12 hours. There are 25 shades in the US but I'm not quite sure how many there are in Europe or here in Germany where I live. 
the important thing is how it performs and uh, as you can see I do get full coverage I didn't have a color corrector underneath the eyes I never wear one because I just don't need it so uh, even without that I get the full coverage and I didn't use a ton of it but obviously just the slightest bit too much because this is very covering it's very thick in consistency and it reminds me of the um, Tarte Shape Tape Concealer at the beginning I thought this was a very similar formula to the um, Perfect Match Concealer that they used to have because they changed the formula. Nowadays it's more thin, but it's not. This is more thick in consistency. This covers a lot more, but it's a bit drying underneath the eyes because it's a long lasting one. It actually reminds me more of the Tarte Shape Tape. So in general, I have a good opinion about this. I hoped it to be a bit more up my alley, but um, it's not bad really. Just the fact that it's a bit drying underneath the eyes takes a bit off from the excitement I had. It's settling a bit into the fine lines, so don't use too much of this and don't over powder. So I'm setting now my base, I'm using the same loose powder from RCMA, I'm using the smallest amount possible because this is already drying as I've said and my complexion is also normal to dry. Baking underneath the eyes? No, not with this one, that's out of the question unless you have a very greasy under eye area. For bronzer, I'm taking this one from Physicians Formula. The packaging is very sexy. The powder itself has a corset image, which is a slightly more gold shade than the rest of the bronzer. So I'm applying this to my cheek area and I'm also not forgetting the hairline and the jawline. Then for contour, I'm using NYX's powder blush, which is in the shade taupe. I am using this only underneath the cheekbones as always. And the brush I'm using here is a contour brush from Bedelium Tools. For contouring my nose, I'm always doing a combination between the contour powder and the bronzer. It's just more natural, more neutral, and I like it this way. The brush I'm using here is a contour brush from Ziva. For highlighting the highest points of my face, I am taking the center of the bronzer, which is the corset, and this is a fan brush from Ziva. Then for blush, I'm taking this one from Kiko, which was a limited edition. I love very much the colors, the two colors from it. And uh, this is in Sweet Coral and Apricot. To fill in my brows, I'm going to use next a pomade from Inglot, which is in the shade 19. It is a grayish brown and I'm going to do stroke-like motions. The brush I'm using here is an angled one from Ziva. I'm very much into this natural looking brow trend. I don't mind it if they are thicker, just not the penciled in ones, you know, the, the really bulky ones and stark ones. Then to make that line a bit more crisp, I'm using the same concealer from L'Oreal and a very flat brush. To highlight underneath the brows and also the inner corners of my eyes, I'm using Inhale from the same palette. And this is the only eyeshadow that's not matte, it's like half matte. To set my brows, I'm using then a Brow Artist Plumper from L'Oreal. This is a brow gel and I'm going through the hairs with the brush of it for a more natural appearance. By the way, the shade I'm using here is medium to dark. I'm moving on to the eyes again and all oh joy, I have to take again the palette and the darkest eyeshadow, which I'm applying with a feather light hand. The brush I'm using here is from Sephora. It's a smudging brush and I'm just, I'm trying so hard not to get too much fallout and completely failing. What else?
Next I'm coating my lower lashes with the same mascara from Maybelline. On my lips, I'm going to put next a new liquid lipstick from L'Oreal, which is called I Don't. I don't get the name of it, but I do like this. I don't. It's a very fiery red, orangey red, and it's right up my alley. I love this formula because it's thin in consistency. You can put two or three layers on top, and this is something, you know, something for liquid lipsticks. And it's not sticky, it's not streaky, and it's really long lasting. It wears off quite nicely. It's very, very good. So guys, how do you feel about my makeup look? Um, how do you feel about the products I've used in this tutorial? Do you have any of those? Because some of them are new on the market. And most importantly, do you have the Naked Petite Heat palette? How do you feel about that? Is it working for you? So many questions, I realize. But the truth is, I haven't seen any review on this palette before. I have no idea what people think about it but I know how I feel about it and it's just not working for me and I'm very sorry about this because I realize they have worked a lot on it, they have spent money and time and um, yeah, the end result is just not good. It's not good. I'm going to leave you now because it was enough and I'm going to see you next week, hopefully with new products that are just, you know, mind-blowing, amazing quality and all that. Bye. Thank you.